Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is a morning market prep video for April 1st, 2022. Well, we finally made it through that first quarter. My goodness, it was a volatile one. Hopefully, this quarter won't be quite so volatile, but there are some issues out there to be worried about. So how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. I do appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts, see if we can gain some information about how we may want to approach the market today on this wonderful Friday. Let's take a look here. We've got our diamonds. Had a pretty rough close yesterday. Just all of a sudden, those bears decided to really engage on the day. And uh, part of it might have been some of the bond problem that we're starting to see out here. I'll cover that in just a second. First, let's take a look at this chart. Um, pulling back, um, as hard as that was of a pullback yesterday, um, I think that's really just a function of how overbought we really were um, yesterday and it didn't really create any technical damage in the chart. I don't think, we did lose a little bit of price support right here, but I don't think this turns uh, too ugly until we drop down through a price support level in here or even push down into here. That's where we really start getting ugly. And the reason I say that is because that's when we would technically fail back down through that 50 day moving average. And that could be a little bit of a problem if we were to drop on through there. So far, nothing major here is is damaged. We did lose the 200 day moving average, but I think as long as we hold on to that 50, we're going to be in pretty good shape. Down through here, though, that would be a problem for us and um, could be that psychological barrier in the market that really brings out the bears. So keep an eye on that. Now, one of the reasons that we may have seen um, such a harsh sell off is first off, we had those numbers yesterday. The um, numbers one of the favorite numbers of the fed is the personal incomes and outlays and that certainly didn't come in positive yesterday and um, what we also know is that the jobless claims did come in very very strong which really opens that uh, door up for a very aggressive fed uh, coming up um, so we'll want to watch that pretty closely um, because we could see those higher rates coming and um, to attack this rising inflation. I would suspect the CPI and PPI will be very, very strong unless something dramatically changes here over the next week or so, a couple of weeks anyway. Let's take a look. Um, one of the reasons that we are having some trouble, um, as I mentioned yesterday, we had a five-year and a 10-year um, inversion in our bond rates. Um, as of this morning, our five-year bond rate is at 2.52. Our 10-year bond rate is at 2.41. So we are 11 basis points above uh, the 10-year. So our five-year is worth more than the 10. And um, the one that is really critical, the one that a lot of people watch, is the 2 and 10. Um, at this very moment, the 2, 2 uh, backed off just a little bit. It's at 2.38. Um, the 10-year is at 2.41. But there was a period last night where the 2-year inverted um, over the 10-year. We've settled that down here just a little bit this morning. But unfortunately, there's another problem, and that is that the five-year treasury bonds are now worth exactly the same um, amount as the 30-year bonds. We actually had a brief um, inversion on those as well last night. So we're starting to see that bond inversion. And if you go back and look at the Fed data, you can, you can go to the Fed site and go back and look at the Fed data. There has never been a time uh, in history that we haven't had a, a recession within six to 12 months after a two-year and 10-year bond inversion. So kind of keep that in mind. And I think there is a little bit of a worry in the market, even though the Fed is really trying to downplay that right now, there is that bit of a worry. 
I think that might have been the aggressiveness of the bears yesterday. So this morning, as you can see, we're trying to ignore that and pop back up and maybe try to hold on to this price support with this little bit of bullishness here this morning. Let's take a real quick look at the SPY. SPY, very much the same, pretty strong sell off. But once again, I don't think we have any major problem with that selling unless we start breaking down through some of these support levels here in the chart. You can see right in here, we've got this little bit of support. If we break down through there, then we start having that psychological barrier in the market maybe coming in where those bears could really become aggressive. But until that occurs, um, this may just be a pullback and, and really a necessary pullback to relieve some of the overbought pressure because I mentioned this yesterday, how parabolic this rally is and that um, we needed a little break here um, in the market. Once again, crossing down uh, through these technical indicators will be the problem. If we can't hold those, um, that's, that's where we'll run into trouble. If we take a look at the QQQ, QQQ, very much the same situation. Um, it pulled back pretty hard at the end of the day. But you can see in here that really didn't create any technical damage in the price section of the chart. Um, and once again, I don't think this turns uh, really ugly unless we drop down through here. And that would be a problem for us. And, um, and remember, this was very parabolic. So a pullback, a nice long consolidation would actually be bullish for the market. I'm not sure that's what we're going to get, but that's what would um, really uh, firm up that chart just a little bit. Keep in mind our 50 day moving average is down here quite a ways. We failed at the 200 day, so that is a little bit of a problem. But once again, if we drop down through some of these support levels and start attacking that 50 day, that's where we're going to have some problems. And then our Russell IWM. IWM um, had a rough day um, on Wednesday, followed through on Thursday in that selling. But we didn't really break down. We pushed down into this price support level. And I've mentioned this before, um, that price support level right in there will be important. We're wedged right between these major levels here in the chart. We have a massive level of price resistance up in here. Got a little tiny bit of price support right in here. So if that price support does hold, we're gonna be okay, we could just rest. But if we drop down through here, then we still have a little bit of uh, of uh, concern uh, that would creep up in the market and it would likely create a test of this low once again. Let's take a quick look at our VIX. Our VIX, interestingly enough, we shot up um, right there at the end of the day as there was some heavy selling coming in right at the end of the day and um, shot back up so we did kind of regain this little bit of price support right there but our overall our downtrend very very steep downtrend probably a little too steep honestly um, in that move and we did end up just right there at that 20 handle and I've mentioned this before that 20 handle right in here has got quite a little bit of support in that area so as long as this is a temporary bounce won't make any won't make any difference and if we were to rally um, the VIX back up with a little bit of fear as the market pulls back remember we've got quite a lot of resistance up in here now that could stop us and push that back down so at this point no major catastrophe has occurred albeit it might have been a little bit painful for folks yesterday particularly those that um, kind of rushed in too quickly um, or too late in the rally. Let's take a look at our T2122. Now our T2122 has been telling us for some time that we have been overbought. And um, it finally really played out yesterday and we pushed down, it was funny, we, we were right about here a half hour before the close and then after, after that um, last 30 minutes of real heavy selling, we push down here toward that mid range. So let's watch that area in here. There um, are often, you know, we can see where we can push down strongly like that and we can bounce off of this mid range here in this chart. But let's keep an eye on that. If we can find, we've got a lot of data coming out this morning. If we can find bullishness in that data, what we've done is we've opened up a pretty good opportunity for a pushback 
uh, forward and we can see that in the pre-market we're trying to push forward and really trying to deny that there's anything that there's any problem with these uh, bond rates we're <laughs> they're really trying to convince us there's no problem here but um, there are there's a lot of data out there that tells us that there actually is a problem here and if we take a look um, here if the bears um, have some reason to gain some control here on the day then um, we still have a pretty big downside opportunity that could come in the market so we'll want to keep a close eye then let's take a look at our um, 22108 our T2108, as you can see, we pulled back yesterday and we pulled back rather strongly um, there at the end of the day. But I got to say, this didn't really break down. Um, no major problem showing up here um, in that. Obviously, you know, the number of stocks above their 40 day moving average pulled back yesterday. But you can see we held in here above 50 percent, 56 percent of the stocks holding above their um, uh 40 day moving average. So I got to give that up to the bears. We didn't really break it down um, in that chart. And we do have some price support areas in here that could hold it. So this is just a rejection of that downtrend. Really nothing more than that at the moment. T2107, very much the same. Um, we did pull back from that big old downtrend that we've been displaying here for a long, long time. Pulled back from that, rejected just a little bit, but there is price support in here to hold that if we continue to push on back. So no major problem here yet in that T2107. And once again, T2101, until the end of the day, right there in the last 30 minutes, um, our volume, continued to be light. So T2101 really isn't helping us out much here. Um, momentum is really difficult in a market like this when volumes are so low. And so it's really not helping us out much um, in that chart. Let's take a quick look um, at our um, economic calendar for today. And our economic calendar, this is going to be a kind of a busy morning here of data. We've got the employment situation number here this morning, and we know employment has been really strong. Um, there is some problems with that, though. If the employment situation number were to come in hotter than expected, um, that really does open that Pandora's box a little bit. Remember, we've got some Fed members um, that have been suggesting, well, suggested last time we should go a full point in interest rate increase. The Fed has kind of bent a little bit saying, yeah, we could see 50 basis point increases for the next four um, uh, Fed meetings, but um, we haven't had any of them um, uh, win that aggressive um, battle here at the Fed. If this comes in hotter than expected, that could be one of those things that could inspire the Fed to get moving on this because all of the other inflation markers are rising very sharply. And if we're at full employment and beyond, that's going to be a problem for them not to act aggressively um, in, the, in the market. So we'll see. And then we've got uh, PMI manufacturing and ISM manufacturing. These will be important markers as well today because we're starting to see some clues that the consumer um, it, are being strained. They're having some trouble. Obviously, yesterday, um, their personal income is not keeping pace with um, inflation and um, creating some problems out there for the consumer. If we start to see manufacturing numbers beginning to decline or slip a little bit, that could be problematic for the market as well. It's just that indication that inflation is affecting them and consumers are changing their habits. So we'll want to watch that and then keep an eye on this construction spending. We kind of know construction is starting to slow down a little bit that those um, numbers, housing numbers and uh, mortgage numbers and things like that are starting to slip just a little bit. So watch that closely. That could potentially be a negative number as well today. Watch that. Let's take a look at um, our earnings calendar. Now, there is no blog today, guys. Um, 
it was my fault this morning and there is no blog today but honestly it's really okay because when i look at the earnings calendar there's really nothing to uh, be at all worried about um we have at this point this morning last night we had three confirmed um reports um on the calendar today we are now down to two confirmed reports today and i'll cover those right here um lgiq um, we'll be reporting this morning and um, a 92 cent stock I don't think is going to be any kind of a major concern for the market today and um, YTRA is the only other confirmed report and we're holding in there around two dollars a share on that one so uh, not exactly the market moving reports um, that um, you know, we have to be too concerned about. So those are the only two notables this this morning, and it's only because those are the only two that are verified reports for the day. Um, and that's pretty common as we slip into the uh, first part of the quarter. Let's take a look um, at um, some stocks that could be setting up, guys. But before we do that, if you could do me a quick favor. If this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful, helpful, I would truly appreciate it if you continue to click those thumbs up buttons, leave a brief comment. Hopefully you're finding these, um, the, these videos to be much different than what you might find out there on normal social media feeds or places where they're full of prediction and full of, oh my gosh, we're going to go to the moon or we're, this stock is, you know, all that kind of stuff. I want to use the actual price action of the chart and the technicals of the chart. And um, without all the hype and without all the prediction, um, I've been able to build a career doing this um, now 30 years in this business, um, about 17 years full time in this business. And um, hopefully you find that kind of information helpful as well. Let's take a quick look at some of these um, stock setting up and please keep in mind guys these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security as a matter of fact you should do your own due diligence making sure that you understand these trades completely that you understand the tolerance your risk tolerance whether or not they fit your plan you should never ever blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas let's take a quick look at a couple of these a um, couple that i'm going to mention that i've mentioned before take a look at plug um I have a bias in this one because I am holding plug and plug has been chugging up right along here doing nicely and broke through trying to break through I should say it's 200 day moving average and then ended up pulling back here again but I still like this chart I do think there is a possibility that this may need just a little bit more rest in here if I run a trend up here depending on how you might want to draw that if I run a trend up here this may require more of that consolidating rest out here or even a pullback before it gets that opportunity to go on higher so keep an eye on that plug still looking good I've got a nice profit in this trade you might want to take a look at tractor supply I've mentioned tractor supply a few times here and you can see tractor supply had that opportunity here just yesterday it really took off um, popped up through that resistance took off and then ended up with that selling on the day pulling all the way back keep a close eye on that if it can hold this support remember we've seen a lot of this recently well we'll pop and then pull back and then we finally take off but watch that closely in here again rising commodity prices rising food prices might inspire a lot more folks to do more of the urban farming and tractor supply is pretty well situated for that kind of consumer right now so watch that carefully um, may have an opportunity here but it could also fail so keep that um, keep that on your radar screen as you guys know I have mentioned um, CRM here a few times and CRM continues to be a pretty interesting tart chart notice we have this support in here and we did pop that resistance in there and I had suggested that this may need a little bit more time to rest and it popped up through pulled back but notice that we could hold right in this area and then still have that upside opportunity so I'd keep CRM on a list you 
you want to notice that this really is trying to drag that 50 day moving average out. We're getting our short term moving averages crossing up through creating that possible short squeeze in CRM. So I think it's worth keeping an eye on that and continuing to pay attention to that chart. You know, um, on the short side here, guys, there are some possible opportunities um, um, to be mentioned. If we take a look at XLF, XLF, our financials are starting to struggle here just a little bit. Notice we rallied back up here into this downtrend. And even though we did pop back through that 50 day moving average, well, we might not be able to hold that. And you can see our 50 is crushing down here by the 200 day and could soon have that 50 inverting um, below that 200. And when we get into a bond trouble, uh, bond issues like we are, financials tend to struggle here a little bit. Remember, if you can do if you can have better returns on a five year treasury versus a 30 year treasury now, well, that makes it difficult to be lending money um, in a lot of places. They would rather just buy some treasuries. So watch that closely. This could be a bit problematic for um, the financials. We'll want to watch that. And if you take a look at stocks like uh, WFC, WFC um, is in a pattern that is not healthy here at all. Now, I wouldn't chase this move down at the moment. What I'd want to wait and see is if we got a little bit of a bounce back. If we caught a bounce back that failed at a lower high, that's where I want to get short. So watch those closely. Um, in um, There is maybe some hints of problems here on those financials um, or continuing problems, should I say. Um, on those financials so watch that closely we can also see um, those potential trades in like BAC BAC running into trouble uh, Citibank running into some serious trouble actually falling through its last low um, that's a pretty ugly chart and once again I don't want to chase this down but any rally back that fails at or near resistance level would be a perfect opportunity to grab that short. So watch watch closely on that. They, they are looking a little bit rough here in the market. Another place, um, boy, uh, we had a um, downgrade here in AMD. And I know a lot of folks have been hoping AMD would really get going. There's been an awful lot of conversation about it, I can tell you, in um, um, Hit Run Candlesticks and Right Way Options. Um, as it pushed on up. Oh my goodness, here we go. AMD is going to be great. And then, wow, it really got whacked um, yesterday, pulling back hard. So be kind of careful here. It still has that possibility that it could hold this downtrend as support and hold that little support right in there and bounce back up. But here's my rule on that. If a stock loses a price support level in the chart, it must recover proof to hold and then I can assume that that trend is ready to resume back to the upside. If we rally back up here and fail at price resistance, that's exactly the place I'd want to short and I'd be watching carefully because if we break this big support in here, um, look out below on AMD. So keep a close eye on those. Um, let's take a look at a few more long trades that you might want to be keeping um, a close eye on. Take a look at Mo. Now I hold Altria. Um, so again, I have a little bit of a bias here on this stock, but if you take a look at Altria, um, we're moving up in this nice little upside trend. And this is a defensive sector stock with a really strong dividend yield. And when markets get nervous, um, we have that opportunity that some of these defensive sector stocks can perk up and look a little better. Now, I am honestly not trading this based on the daily chart. I'm trading this based on the weekly chart here. And you can see we broke this little downtrend in here, held it as support, and we're starting to move up. Now, I can't tell you this this is going to be a good trade or a winning trade. I do have a profit in it, but I would tell you that this kind of pattern plays out awful lot for some good upside returns. So keep a close eye on that if you have an interest in a little bit of a longer term trade. You might also want to take a look at um, stocks like Coca-Cola. Coke made a move here. Um, we've been watching this um, little area as we broke through and holding some support. And again, 
end. It's that defensive sector maybe perking up where we're getting a little bit of nervousness on the market. That opportunity that this may push on through and set some new record highs here in Coca-Cola. So keep an eye on some of those charts. So there's a few things in there, a few short trades, a few long trades. Hopefully that's helpful for you today. I want to wish you guys all a fantastic Friday. Um, be, be safe and be careful out there. It is a pretty dangerous market. And remember, as we slide into the weekend, there's always that bit of uncertainty to deal with. So um, I want to wish you all a great day and a wonderful, wonderful weekend. We'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. Wish you all the best.